We live in a world where it's offensive to preach the gospel of Jesus and to talk about his name. And I'm here to talk about it. Welcome to the Jesus is Offensive podcast. Yo, what is good, everybody? It is Taylor Warfelman here, back with another episode of Jesus is Offensive. Welcome back. Um, glad you're here. I hope everyone is doing incredibly well on this Friday. Um, it's actually Thursday, but um, for me. But uh, I just want to say thank you, guys. We just hit um, 10 different countries that the podcast is being streamed in. So that's amazing. Obviously, the majority of the listeners are still coming from America. But um, I'm just blown away uh, by how God is just moving this thing and that it's completely his podcast. It's not me. I don't I don't care if these people know who I am, what my name is. Um, it's all about God. So I, I thank you for those of you who are listening outside the country. So, so cool. I saw there was a big spark in Indonesia. I have no idea who that is, but thank you for tuning in. And uh, yeah, um, today is going to be probably a shorter episode. I feel like I say that so much, but it never ends up turning out that way. Um, but I kind of, well, I wasn't sure what I was going to talk about this week, but um, I kind of thought of something uh, that I want to go over, but I don't think it's going to take as much time as normal. Because it's not really a teaching so much as just like an experience. But um, I just want to do some housekeeping things first. Um, we are, we being I <laughs> currently, uh, am working on some things with, uh, I hate this word, especially for defining things for like God, but like for the brand basically of Jesus is Offensive. Um, obviously it's a podcast, but we want it to be more than that and um, spread the word just about Jesus, not about the podcast, but that the podcast could be used as a motor to spread the the gospel, spread the word around. So I'm working on a few things. They're coming up the pipeline. Um, it's going to be a bit before they're here, but I think you guys will really enjoy them. And uh, I just think it's really cool to just see this community that's kind of coming around this podcast. Um, again, I've talked to a lot of you guys and I'm, I'm so appreciative and I actually have really enjoyed the conversation that I've had with, with all you guys. Um, so please keep, keep hitting me up. And I love talking about Jesus and, uh, maybe some of you will make an appearance someday on the podcast. That's another thing. Um, Another housekeeping thing, we want to bring on more guests, but um, right now, because mics are limited, uh, I haven't done that since the episode three with, with my sister, Emma, um, but that is coming. Um, sorry, I need a drink of water. I woke up this morning and my ear is like completely plugged and I was like, what is going on? So I don't know, but hey, life goes on. Um, prayed over it and it got a little bit better, but, uh, still a little bit clogged up. Um, what was I saying? Uh, oh yeah, we want to have more guests. Um, and I can promise you this episode 10 is going to be special. We're going to have some guests on that one. And it's probably going to be a bit of a longer episode if everything pans out the way we're looking. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be sweet. Um, but yeah, expect more guests soon. Maybe even next episode. I'm not sure been so scattered lately that I get to Thursday and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I have an episode. Um, but God has been so good through it. And um, uh, especially with the episode about my testimony, uh, I really appreciate the support. I just, I know that sharing your testimony can be really hard. And actually it wasn't that bad, but I think for other people, it can be seen as like, wow, that's, that's really big, you know, and really hard. Um, but, you know, I was able to do it and I, I'm really happy with um, just how it's affected people and, and what people have got out of it. So man, all glory to God. And I just can't be thankful enough for the things that I had to go through because of it. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see what else. Um, as always follow the Instagram. If you have Instagram, uh, I think for that episode 10, not sure we might be doing something a little special, um, where we get some feedback, but we would need to use Instagram as a platform by chance email, but check out the Instagram. It's Jesus is offensive. We don't post a lot. We just post when episodes are out. So if you just want a nice friendly reminder, check that out. And for the new stuff that's coming in the future, again, check that out. If you haven't, Jesus is offensive. Uh, I just 
yeah, again, I think it's just really nice because I'm a little bit of a, a little bit OCD of just like, I'd like, I'd love to have everyone who is like on board and like wants to spread this same gospel, the, the true gospel, um, one that's going to be offensive in these coming days if it's not already offensive. Uh, I, I think it would just be cool for everyone to just like assemble on one Insta um, because I just think community is amazing, especially for people like me and maybe you that are experiencing that a lot of your friends aren't on board with everything that you preach and the way you want to live. So it can be hard to find community to build yourself up in fellowship. So hoping we can develop that more there. So check it out. Yeah, a lot of plans for the future, but I'm just following God's lead right now. And uh, yeah. So with with that being said, um, let's just pray right now. Dear Lord, um, I just thank you, God, for um, just all the people that you've brought to this podcast, God, and, and just how you've moved in it, Lord, that Again, it is not for my glory, Lord. It's not my will. It's your will. Your will be done, God. Um, and I, I just thank you so much, Lord. I pray that you would bless this short podcast today, God, that people would get something out of it, Lord, um, that they would be touched. But it wouldn't just be, they wouldn't be just hearers, right? They would be doers, God. So inspire them to move. Holy Spirit, work on them to move um, the right direction. In your name I pray, amen. So today, sorry, I'm getting texts and I'm like, chill out. I'm trying to podcast. <laughs> um, so today um, I thought I would just do a little bit of a continuation of my um, testimony. Now, you know what? I'm not talking about going into like detail of <laughs> like unimportant details, but I, I just figured that because um, there was such a good re um, reception. Is that the word? Uh, I guess. Yeah, people liked the testimony and were inspired by it and 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 felt pushed to do more that I wanted to explain a little bit more about overcoming addiction. And I think that's what I'm going to call this one. Now, obviously, um, a lot of addictions are very different, but when we know God and we and we're we're following after God, we know that most things are spiritual and also that it's good and evil. There's no middle ground. So, yes, you might be addicted to some sort of certain sub some substance um and not for instance like pornography or something like that but it's all the same they're very similar um all addictions uh as my friend has described you know pump dopamine into you and like uh give you that drive to want to continue to do it um i'm no scientist i don't know how all that works but i know how it feels to be addicted to something and not be able to stop and i want to talk about that today so this can be applied to whatever now I think the number one thing is willingness. Um, you have to be willing to do whatever it takes to change. And that's where I was when I overcame uh, pornography with, with the help of, of Jesus, obviously, and masturbation. Um, as in my case, they were hand in hand. Um, and, you know, it took me saying, I surrender. And not again, not just saying I surrender, because in the past I've said I surrender, I surrender. But this was like, I will do whatever. That is true surrender. It's like, God, if you tell me to drive to Alaska and that's how I'm going to be free, whatever, I will do it. You know what I mean? It's it's like that um, helpless surrender of just like helpless abandon, like do, do whatever you will just... Tell me what I should do and I will do it because I want this gone. And I realized that that was the, the key. Now, before I get wrapped into my like story and a little bit more in depth of the things that I did to become free, I want to say, first of all, we have a shortcut to everything I'm going to say, which is get prayer from someone who actually knows their authority in Christ and who will actually pray to deliver you from this said spirit of A, B, and C. Because in my opinion, and what I see in the Bible, if you are addicted, if you cannot stop, if you are a slave to your sin, it very well could be spiritual. And it's coming from a person who lived in a Christian home, all that good stuff, and I still felt tormented by a demon, and I still had to be set free. I did it the long way. Why? Because I had too much pride. I had too much pride to just go to my family and say, I'm struggling with this. I need prayer. Let's just cut it out today. It was pride. And I'm, I'm really working through that. And man, thank God. 
God, I've, I've taken a lot of big steps to just let down pride. Cause pride isn't always just saying, Oh, look at me, look at me. It's, it's, it's not being open to people cause you don't want to show weakness. That can be pride as well. And I'm learning that weakness is strength, you know, with all that being said, find someone who can just pray for you. And that person could literally be me. Email me. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. I've heard every single story. I don't, I don't mean to say I don't care, but whatever your story is, I do care, but I don't um, care to judge you for it because I know we all have um, past that we regret. So for one, reach out. If the pride is holding you back, let's talk about it. And we're also going to talk about renewing the mind. So even if you are free from addiction, this episode could still help you because as I know, you're still going to have a temptation here and there once in a while. And this is how and what worked for me and what is working to renew my mind. Do I ever have the temptation? Of course. But have I fallen? No. Since I was set free? No, I have not because I know the keys. I know the steps and I also had to surrender. So getting back, number one thing is surrendering fully. Don't come telling me, oh, I struggle with this. I struggle with this. I just need a quick fix. You got to give everything and say, God, I will do anything because I hate this thing. And I think that will flesh out most of you listening because, and this isn't mean towards you. I just know the human heart, even my own surrender is hard. Did I really want to do anything to get free for a long time? No, I couldn't even spend enough time with Jesus. Like he asked me, that was one of the original things he wanted me to do. Anyways, though, when I cried out to him, he told me to go on this 12 day fast. Now I've explained this already, but it says in the Bible, you know, some demons can only come out with prayer and fasting. And I was like, okay, this is, this is the only way for me. Cause I'm too prideful to ask for prayer. <laughs> so I, I did that and it worked. So that's for one. I'm not saying everyone should just fast. Okay. But I am, I mean, I am saying that most everyone that's a Christian should try fasting from time to time. I'm saying though, to be free, I'm not saying everyone should just go fast. All I'm telling you is I asked God and he gave me an answer. He didn't even tell me how many days the fast was. I was thinking it was going to be 40 because that's like the maximum you can go. And I was like, all right, let's do it. That has to be your heart. And I'm not saying that again to be prideful about myself because I know I was not there for a long time. I'm just trying to help you get the keys. That has to be your heart. Now, once that's your heart, let God reveal to you what it is because it ain't going to be easy. I'll tell you that you have to work for things in the kingdom, but he always blesses you through it. So when I fasted, obviously, um, made it through, had some confirmation from different people and I felt free. You know, if it's, if you're listening, you know, deep down, you're not free. If you're not free, you know, and I knew I wasn't free because I couldn't stop even when I tried. Now, let me tell you this again. I've been around many dudes and many people who have tried to get set free from pornography and masturbation on their own. It is almost impossible. And I'll tell you what, especially when you're battling a spirit, it's impossible. Good on you for doing it if you have, but I'm just telling you right now in my experience and many people I've seen, it's impossible and it's ruined a lot of things for a lot of people. I tried the blocking things on my phone. I tried the accountability partner. I, I tried, don't go in this room. Don't be alone here. Da, 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 da. Those are all great things to pair with God. But what I was doing is trying to fix it by myself on my own accord in my own strength. And guess what? Without using the spirit, I don't have the strength to overcome. And that's you as well. You don't have the strength as much as you want it. You don't have it. That is why you have to cry out to Jesus. And man, in the end, it feels good because it's like, wow, all I have to do is look to Jesus. And man, he takes care of everything. It brought a whole new meaning to the cross. You know, I always saw the cross and made me emotional. That's my savior. But until I was actually set free from something that big that I felt like was impossible. I said, that's the God of miracles. And when he was on that cross, he died so that I could be free of this sin thousands of years later. Boom. That is powerful. So again, you, um, can't do it on your own strength. I've seen everyone try everything. So why don't you try God this time and, and stop with the, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Cause it just doesn't work. It's, it's simple as that. It doesn't work. Learn to let go and learn to give it to God and then work hard. You have to grind this thing. If you think blocking stuff on your phone is grinding, you have never felt grinding like this. So once I was free, I just want to explain some things that I kind of did to renew my mind because it says in the Bible, you know, we need to renew our mind just because we get set free from a demon. If we don't renew our mind, those old thoughts can start to come in because a demon, yes, it might, it might have more power over some of our um, wants and desires, but it's 
if we get it removed, it's not like the habit is going to change because the habits are our body, right? Our body makes habits. And I think it's like 21 days or something like that. So for one, every single day during the fast and after for about 30 to 50 days, maybe 70 days, I can't remember. Every morning I would say, um, I declare in the name of Jesus that I am free and then name off the sin, right? I'm free from pornography, masturbation, whatever the case may be. And then, and I would just declare that everything in the name of Jesus, everything you say in the name of Jesus, I declare this in the name of Jesus. And then I would say, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I, for some reason, always also said it again. I said, um, who Jesus sets free is free for good, right? Indeed, he's free for good. And that was declaring, just so you know, this is declaring in the spiritual realm, right? It has immense power. Your words have immense power. It says our words have the power to bless and to curse. But in the same way, it has power for you as well. Because when you hear yourself saying that, you start to believe it. And that's also important. I'm not, I'm no psychic and I'm, thank goodness I'm not. But in a set, in a sense, it is psychological. You have to get out of your own head. If you believe the lie that you are a slave, even when you're not, you will become a slave. That's just how it works. Um, you'll become a slave to your sin if you think that, if you think that way. So, right, I would declare these things, right? I would declare my baptism set me free from sin, right? As it says in the Bible that Jesus, death, his blood, I'm washed in the blood. I would say I'm healed by his stripes. Now, some of these are Bible verses. What did Jesus do when he was tempted by the devil? He quoted scripture, boom, 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 hit him, hit him, hit him. That's ammo. Another thing I would do, I would pray in tongues. If you haven't received the gift of tongues, or maybe you don't have the Holy Spirit, reach out. Don't feel shame. Reach out because I'm telling you, many people are confused with what tongues do, so they see it as unimportant. But just because you don't see the purpose yet doesn't mean that it's unimportant. It just means that you don't see it yet because you haven't experienced it. Let me tell you, this is the most powerful thing you can do. Praying in tongues, it's like a warrior. It's the spirit speaking mysteries to God. It's speaking on your behalf in the spiritual realm. Okay, so when I was speaking in tongues, maybe I don't I don't know what else to say to fight off the temptation, but my tongues do because it's the spirit of God. It's more powerful than me. Obviously, I'd much rather the spirit speak than I. So I would pray in tongues, boom, just a battle tongue, just a battle tongue. I would just go at it. And I would just continue to do these things every day and every night. I, I would bind every spirit. So I would bind um, spirit of pornography, spirit of lust, spirit of masturbation, even the spirit of curiosity. Now, I don't even know if this is a thing, but for me, for instance, and I know a lot of people can be like this, you're scrolling through Instagram, right? Something triggers you. You get curious and you just keep telling your mind, oh, mind, your mind, well, your mind's saying, or your spirit is saying, you shouldn't be looking at this. And you, you keep saying, oh no, I'm just curious. I'm not going to fall tonight or today. I'm just curious. But then what happens? You always end up falling. That curiosity can be very bad, right? And I learned that. So I would just start saying, spirit of curiosity, go. I don't even want to be curious about this picture or whatever. Go. And this is a whole different conversation, but um, and I can just speak for myself. I'm not being sexist or anything, but I'm not attracted to men, obviously. So for the women that are listening, please, 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 please be so careful with what you post on Instagram. Because although you might be saying, I know it's my body, my choice, all that stuff. And yes, what men, how men react to it is completely wrong. You are completely, or you are completely right about that. But where you're wrong is it says that if you cause a brother to stumble, you are sinning just as well. So I know that seems unfair, but just be so careful. Be modest. Be careful because especially now being on the outside, I don't want my little girl, my little daughter to post something and I know how men are, are receiving that. Yes, it's wrong of them to do that, but you can't control that. What you can control is your side. So please be so careful because I can tell you what, being on Instagram, there were so many triggers and so many people, things I had to unfollow and, and block and because that's how a man's mind works. And I don't mean to make an excuse, right? But we're attracted to women. And when we see things that we should never see as easily on the internet, what happens? It triggers us. Now, again, you're totally right. It's wrong for us to do that. But we live in a fallen world. So do as much as you can on your side and we'll do the same. I just want to throw that in there. I'm not trying to be sexist at all. Just remember, we're a body. We got to grow together. We got to help each other. Don't just be me, me, me. Oh, it's not fair. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be like that. Try to help your brothers, right? Anywho, 
Um, with that being said, uh, yeah, spirit of, of curiosity. You just cast that guy out every morning, every night. What I would do, and again, I'm no professional. Uh, I have done a lot of deliverances, but what I would do is bind it in the name of Jesus. And then I would just cast it out. Binding it, you know, when you get bound, you can't do anything. And then you just cast it out of there. You send it out. Um, I found that to be helpful. Um, and I would just keep going until I felt the temptation go. You can't just say, well, Taylor, I... I, I tried and, you know, it didn't go away. So I just fell into my sin. No, you, you keep going, keep declaring these things, keep declaring these things until you don't feel it in your mind anymore, tempting you. And then you go on with your day. And whenever those thoughts come back, you go back. This is like your, your sword. And I'm hoping you guys are taking notes on this one, because if you do struggle with something that you're addicted to, it could be even Instagram. I mean, I don't know anything. These are important, important, um, schemes and plans that you can get through whatever you're addicted to. So please take note, um, because I tried so many different things before this worked and I know it worked. Why? Because it was all Jesus and none of me. Right. So yeah, I would bind those, cast them out. Right. And again, I would just say I'm free. I'm healed by his stripes. Um, I'd pray in tongues a lot. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I also recognize the triggers too of like, uh, I think, for a while there, I got off Instagram. I also set, uh, I, I still have restrictions all over my phone. My phone basically shuts off at 1030, except for a few apps, because it's not even that I've never even tried to break the passcode since I've got set free because I'm new. I don't, the temptation doesn't have that extra boost, right? When I had a spirit living inside of me or whatnot, it had that extra boost. When I had the temptation, it was like extra strong. Now that that thing is gone, yeah, I still get a temptation here and there, but I'm strong enough because I'm just operating in the spirit of God. Um, where was I going with that? Um, not sure, but wow, I can't believe I just lost my train of thought. Anyways, though, um, you got to stick with it and you got to stay strong and you got to keep quoting scripture. Keep fighting. You have to fight the devil. It says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. That even means not just like fighting, like fist fighting. That means like when you're making all these restrictions on your phone and all this stuff, yes, that's good, but we don't fight against those things. We fight against the spirits. If we can get the spirits out of there, those things won't bother us. We can bypass that. And now I know what I was going to say. I was talking about restrictions. I put restrictions on my phone and I've had those on. I still have them on. Why? Because me as a human, I feel that I don't even need that much freedom. If there's so much freedom in the world that I can so easily go on my phone and find some pornography or, or let's say you struggle with, um, let's say you struggle with drugs. I can go find like drugs to buy so easily. That is a world that I don't need that much freedom. And I realize that, and I don't want the restrictions taken on my phone because why it's like playing with fire. You're going to get burnt. I don't need that freedom. <laughs> that freedom is cool. I don't need it. And I know the devil will even tell you because he told me this. Yeah, but if you restrict yourself, then you're restricting God's power over your life. That's literally how smart he is because he knows, oh, you love Jesus. So I'll just position the argument to say like, oh, well, like you're saying Jesus is weak then if you do that. No, that is being a good steward of your freedom and saying, I don't need this. I don't need to be this free on the internet. That is being a good steward. And I, there's in no world is God saying, I'm disappointed in you because you know, you're not strong enough to, to just live with no restrictions. No, I, I am strong enough. I'm so strong that I made those restrictions so that I don't have to worry all the time. Again, these are just some of my thoughts, some of the things that worked for me, but I'm telling you, you guys got to go hard at it because um, about 30 to 40 to 50 days after I got set free, I knew I was free, but of course that fear comes in of thinking you're not free, free. You're not free. That's what the devil tried to tell me. You're not free. You're not free because he knew even when I had went 70 days on my own strength being like trying to stop. And then I fell back into it. I knew that until I reached 70 days, I was going to feel this insecurity. And that when the devil would like, um, heighten that insecurity, it would be really hard. And that's when I had to fight back and just say, nope, I'm not listening to you. I'm not listening to you. And the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And by the end, when I got to those 70 days, he was gone because he knew he had no in. I was strong. I had made new habits and I realized that I was actually free. Why? Because I had beat my personal record, 
my record. This was God's record now, completely free. So yeah, those are some of my my pointers. Again, please, I can't even stress it enough. If you are struggling, reach out to me. We'll grab coffee. We'll hang out, become best friends, whatever. Um, this podcast is here to help people. Okay, don't isolate. The devil is telling you right now, isolate, 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 isolate. Don't do it. Literally email me. I'll give you my number. I don't care because we want you to be free. And I'm watching and I have watched so many people who claim they want freedom, but they are not free, who, who, who try to be free, but they are not free. But I'm telling you, this is what works. It's Jesus's name. It's spiritual and it's, it can be overcome. And especially for you who have tried everything, what else do you have left to lose surrender it to jesus and you will get through it but you first have to believe and that was the biggest thing i say most things are mental probably to a fault with like hiking and sports and all that stuff but with this you also have to believe right jesus would heal someone and he said your faith has healed you right because they believed it and they walked in the healing he said that healed you that faith you have to have faith that you will be free and man the devil almost pinned me after years of struggling with this for me to start believing that there's no way that's actually i think what i said the night before i reached out to god i was like i'm never getting free i've tried everything and i will never ever be free he wants to pin you in that corner and then that's when you start adjusting everything around that saying well if i won't be free then this will this and this and this then you start changing what you see salvation and how you see repentance no don't believe those lies you will be free you will be free I'm telling you the way that I'm telling you right now that deliverance from demons, baptism for the washing away of your sins and baptism of the Holy Spirit has a hundred percent success rating. If you put in the work and you have faith, I've watched people get healed, changed from everything, suicidal people who months later, I don't even know who they are. They're a completely different person. You have to believe and you have to have faith. That's true faith to walk in healing. If you don't believe God can heal you, then why are you putting him in a box? He can set you free. Reach out. You can do it, you guys. So I know this is a little bit of a shorter episode, but I I just was really feeling on my heart like someone needs these pointers. Um, And yeah, if you need even more and you need a a buddy to just talk, talk you through this more, literally even just say the same things again. I will reach out to me, please, please reach out. Our email is jesusisoffensive at gmail.com. It's just me. No one else sees it. It's just me. Don't have to feel shame. But yeah, try these things, you guys. Even if, again, you're set free from everything and you're just struggling with some minor things, remember that the devil every single day is coming after you. And that's why in... um, the Lord's Prayer, it says, give us this day our daily bread, right? Every day we have to pray for our daily bread and to be delivered from the evil one because every day is a new start and it's a new start for the devil as well. So you got to renew your mind every morning. Wake up knowing that you're in battle. Is it going to be tiring? Yes. Those 30, 40 days after the fast, my gosh, I was already exhausted from the fast and it was exhausting to fight every day. But now looking back, it was nothing. But God did something so big, set me free. I'm telling you, addiction and sin, it will ruin your life with Christ. And you could lose the reward if you don't play things right. And it will ruin your credibility to share the gospel. I'll tell you what, I could not have started this podcast if I was still struggling with that because that was the one thing left in my life that I was willfully doing against God, my Father in heaven. Once he set me free from that, I felt free to share the gospel because I actually knew the power. Just like I explained last week, I knew the love that God had for me because I'd been set free. I could share that. I had a testimony. It was still being complete before then. And although I knew the answers, I knew the Bible, blah, blah, blah. If I hadn't experienced it, I can't share it with people. You lose credibility. Hey, God will set you free from this. They're like, oh, what about your addiction. Oh, well, you know, not that one, you know, (laughs) it's on you and it will ruin your credibility and it will ruin your life with Jesus. Don't let this thing lag on. Be desperate. 
go on a fast, reach out to me, call out to Jesus. It says, those who call on me will be saved, right? It's not saying that's salvation. <laughs> Just a, hey, Jesus, okay, you're saved. No, call out to him and he will save you from the evil one. He will deliver you. Jesus means deliver. He came to deliver us from our sins. He will deliver you as well, but you have to be willing. You have to work. So yeah, guys, I believe in you guys. You can do it. I'm no motivational speaker, but I know that you can do it because God is with you. But also, side note, and this is where it gets so tangled, but you need the Holy Spirit. And if you don't, or if you don't know if you have it, or you don't believe you have it, reach out. Don't ask Jesus into your heart. Jesus doesn't become a little guy and go into your heart. You need his spirit. And how do we see it happening in the book of Acts with the laying on of the apostles' hands? Yes, you can receive it without that, but why not do it the way you see it in the Bible? I did all the ways of the church and I got mixed up for so many years. Why not get on the fast track? That being said, again, you guys, man, use these pointers. Um, took me a long time to learn them, uh, so please use them. Don't go through what I had to go through. You can do it, believe in you. And remember, talk to your father in heaven. He is for you. And if he is for you, who can be against you? Read Romans 6, 7, and 8. We can be free from our sin. Don't believe the lie that, oh, I can't be free. I won't be free. Oh no, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, that weakens the gospel. That is water all over the gospel. <laughs> Don't water it down, you guys. It's a thick gospel. It's thick. It's offensive. It's an offensive gospel. It's offensive. But for those of you who are offensive or who are offended, turn that into the conviction because offense a lot of times come from, comes from conviction. I love you guys. And let's just pray real quick. Dear God, dear God. <laughs> wow. What is up? All right. Dear God, I just thank you so much for just what you taught me going through what I had to go through, Lord. Uh, although it was tough, you were with me so much. I'm just so thankful, God, that you just got me through it, Lord, and, and that you were so powerful and just so loving that you broke me free of my chains. God, God, I pray that you would do that for someone listening today. Lord, that you would set them free. God, that they would reach out. Give them strength, Holy Spirit, to reach out or to fast, or to call on your name, to know I got to make a change. I got to go big this time. Lord, thank you, God, for your grace and mercy and for dying on the cross so we could be free from our sin. If you're not free from your sin, your, your cross was a waste, God, but you gave us a way to be free. Let us live in that freedom. It's a free thing. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, thank you guys again for tuning in. Um, again, check out the Instagram. Jesus is offensive. Email me, jesusisoffensive at gmail.com. Yeah, guys, I love you so much. Um, praying for you. Please keep this podcast in your prayers. Uh, I, I'm just praying that it'll move across the nations, not for my glory, but so people will know the truth of the gospel. Um, again, follow the Instagram because we're going to be doing a special episode 10. And I'll just say it now, just for a little preview. I think we're going to be taking some questions um, from you guys, anything about the Bible, who I am, why I started the pot. I don't know what your questions may be, but I know me when I listen to people, I always have questions. Um, so check it out because I will be uh, submitting something on there for questions. Again, love you guys and have a blessed Friday. Um, call out to Jesus right now. Remember, put him first today. Put him first. All right, you guys. Talk to you later.